Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Also, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32. Byzantine Emperor Diocletian was born from a family of Israelite slaves. He enslaved the Romans. But the Romans, captives who were destitute of art, but capable of labor were condemned without regard to their former rank to tend the cattle and cultivate the lands of the barbarians. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Edward Gibbon, 1776. In our last video, the French Revolution and the rise of the slaves of Europe, a few hints were dropped concerning the nature of the revolutions of Europe, especially the French Revolution of 17. 89. 85% of the population of France were still slaves when its revolution began in 1789. John Romanides. Father John Romanides. John Romanides was a Roman theologian, Eastern Orthodox priest, and scholar who had a distinctive influence on post war Greek Orthodox theology. Graduating from the Hermetic College, Brookline, Massachusetts, after attending Yale Divinity School, he received his PhD from the University of Athens. From 1956 to 1965, he was professor of dogmatic theology at Holy Cross Theological School in Brookline, Massachusetts. In 1968, he was appointed as tenured professor of dogmatic theology at the University of Thessaloniki, Greece, a position he held into his retirement in 1982. His latest position was Professor of Theology at Balamand Theological School in Lebanon. Romanides died in Athens, Greece on November 1st, 2001. Franks, Romans, Feudalism, and Doctrine, John Romanides. On page 24 of Franks, Romans, Feudalism, and Doctrine, there is strong evidence that the higher 
and lower nobility of European feudalism were mostly descendants of Germanic and Norman conquerors, and that the serfs were mostly descendants of the conquered Romans and Romanized Celts and Saxons. This explains why the name Frank meant both noble and free in contrast to the serfs. This usage was strong enough to get into the English language by way of the Normans. Thus, even the African American was described as receiving his franchise when set free. The European ruling class were descendants of Germanic conquerors, and the European serfs were descended from the ancient Romans. Charlemagne, king of the Franks, Germanic conquerors of the Romans. Battle of Roncesvalles, Bibliothèque Nationale de France, National Library of France. This manuscript dates back to 1375 to 1380. The Roman administrative units of the civitates were abolished and replaced by the military comitates. The former free Romans were transferred en masse from the cities and were established on the slave labor camps called Ville and Mansi alongside the serfs. They were called villains a term which for understandable reasons came to mean enemies of law and order, John Romanides. The Romans were called villains, enemies of law and order. The Roman administrative units of the civitates were abolished and was replaced by military commentates. The Romans were taken from their cities, stripped of their Roman citizenship and rights. They were placed under martial law by German warrior military bands or troops under the command of the Franks. S P Q R Senatus Populus Q Romanaeus, the Senate and people of Rome. Civitus, an ancient Rome, the Latin term civitus, law. It is the law that binds them together, giving them responsibilities, monera, on the one hand, and rights of citizenship on the other. The agreement has a life of its own, creating a res publica or public entity into which individuals are born or accepted and from which they die or are ejected. The Servitus is not just the collective body of all the citizens. It is the contract binding them all together because each of them 
is a civis. Civitas. City and citizenship. Civitas. Wiktionary. Etymology. Latin. Civitas. City. Civitas. A member of a city. Rome. Roman citizenship. Wikipedia. Roman Gaul. Roman Gaul refers to Gaul under provincial rule in the Roman Empire from the first century BC to the fifth century AD. The Romans colonized Gaul or France. Major cities of Roman Gaul or France, Roman France. Encyclopedia Britannica, France, the Roman conquest. Imperial frontiers, provincial boundaries, Roman main roads, major maritime outlets, provincial capitals, legionary bases, early veteran colonies, and naval bases. Roman city in France. Citizenship in ancient Rome, Latin, civitas, was a privileged political and legal status afforded to free individuals with respect to laws, property, and governance. Citizenship in ancient Rome was complex and based upon many different laws, traditions, and cultural practices. There existed several different types of citizenship determined by one's gender, class, and political affiliations, and the exact duties or expectations of a citizen varied throughout the history of the Roman Empire. The Romans thought of themselves as highly religious and attributed their success as a world power to their collective piety in maintaining good relations with the gods. Their polytheistic religion 
is known for having honored many deities. Most Roman cities had a population between 5,000 and 15,000 people. Cities were important to the Roman Empire because they were where the empire collected taxes. Wealthy Romans typically worked a six hour day from sunrise to noon in the city. The afternoon was spent at leisure, possibly at baths or the games. The familia, the family in Rome included more than just the basic family of father, mother, and children. It also included all the people who were part of the household, such as the slaves, servants, clients, and freed men. As a result, some families in Rome grew quite large. The emperor's family often included thousands of members. Festivals in the ancient Roman Empire were a very important part in Roman religious life. State holidays were celebrated by the Roman people and received public funding. The Romans also distinguished between specific types of gatherings, such as public feast, dinner, normally eaten in the mid-afternoon, and the drinking party. The former free Romans were transferred in mass from the cities and were established on the slave labor camps called Ville and Massey, alongside the serfs. They were called villains, a term which, for understandable reasons, came to mean enemies of law and order, break feudalism and doctrine, page seven. The slave labor camps were called Ville, Villas, and Mansi, Mansions, or Manors. Wiktionary, Ville, plural of Villa, Ville, Villa. Wikipedia, villa. A villa is a type of house that was originally an ancient Roman upper class country house. Ville, villa. Post Roman era. In post Roman times, a villa referred to a self-sufficient 
usually fortified Italian or Gallo-Roman farmstead. It was economically as self-sufficient as a village and its inhabitants who might be legally tied to it as serfs were villains. The Romans were the serfs and the villains of medieval times, the Dark Ages. The slave labor camps were called villae, villas, and mansi, mansions, or manors. Wikipedia, villains. A villain is a class of serf tied to the land under the feudal system. As part of the contract with the Lord of the Manor, they were expected to spend some of their time working on the Lord's fields in return for land. Villains existed under a number of legal restrictions that differentiated them from free men and could not leave without his lord's permission. Generally, villains held their status not by birth, but by the land they held. And it was also possible for them to gain manumission or freedom from their lords. The villainage system largely died out in England in 1500, with some forms of villainage being used in France until 1789 or the French Revolution. Villains could not leave the land without permission. The villains of England were free by 1500 AD, but the ones in France were not free until 1789, the French Revolution. Villains could not leave the land they were born on. Villain was a term used in the feudal system to denote a peasant tenant farmer who was legally tied to a lord of the manor. The majority of medieval European peasants were villains. An alternative term is serf. Serf. Despite this originating from the Latin service, meaning slave, a villain was thus a bonded tenant, a bondman, a bond servant or slave. So he could not leave the land without the landowner's consent. The villain is derived from late Latin villainous, meaning a man employed at a Roman villa rustica or large agricultural estate. The system of tied serfdom originates from a decree issued by the late Roman emperor Diocletian who ruled 284 to 305 CE. The decree obliged ordered peasants to register 
and their locality and never leave it. Because of the low social status of villains, the term became derogatory. In modern French, villain means ugly or naughty. In Italian, Milano means rude or ill-mannered. Spanish, Milano, neighbor or inhabitants of a village or town. But it also accepts the derogatory use, which is very similar to the modern English villain. Let's go over a couple of points. One, villain, an enslaved Roman, denotes a peasant. Two, villain or peasants were by law bound to serve a freakish lord on his villa or manor, his farm. Three, a serf, meaning slave, from the Latin service. Four, the system of serfdom originates from a decree issued by the Roman Emperor Diocletian, who ruled 284 to 305 AD. Emperor Diocletian originated the system of serfdom. What they never told you in history class, page 276. The famed scholar Bamber Gascoigne, in his book, The Christians, provides us with a picture from the corner of St. Mark's in Venice, which has the statue of two fourth century porphyry emperors. Note the nose and lips of these emperors. They have definite African features. Page 276. Black people in ancient Roman history. Wikipedia. Black Romans, the Tetrarchs, Diocletian, Emperor Diocletian was one of the four Tetrarchs. A Roman identity did not suggest a given skin tone. Rather, it referred to an ever-shifting set of cultural traditions growing more eclectic in later Roman history to which inherited physical characteristics were of no relevance. The Black or so-called Black Romans, including Diocletian, were originally from Syria. Judea was called by the Romans. Syria, Palestina, Judea, Kingdom of Judah. Wikipedia, Judea, Judea is a mountainous region in the southern part of the modern states of Palestine and Israel. The name is an ancient historic biblical Hebrew 
contemporaneous Latin and modern day term originating from the Hebrew name Yehuda or Yahweh, a son of the biblical patriarch Jacob, also known as Israel, with Yahweh's or Yehuda's progeny forming the biblical Israelite tribe of Judah, Yehuda or Yahweh, and later the associated kingdom of Judah. In 132 AD, the province of Judea was merged with Galilee into an enlarged province named Syria, Palestina. Syria, Palestina, Judea. Provincia, Syria, Palestina, Roman province, Syria, Palestina, also known as Judea. Israelites was also called Syrians. This verse is referring to Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Deuteronomy 26 and 5. African presence in early Europe. Ivan Van Sodoma. Page 211, Unexpected Faces in Early Asia, Black Noble, 150 to 200 AD, Syria. Black Syrian Noble. Melino Syri. Melino Syri means the Black Syrians. Black Syrians. Melino Syri. A new classical lexicon. Thomas Swinburne Carr. Page 262. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch, Syria, certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Neger and Lucis of Cyrene and Manian, which have been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul as 13 and 1. Antioch, Syria, where the disciples of Christ gathered and where the Jews were first called Christians. Paul's first missionary journey and the first church council at Jerusalem. Chapter 13, verse 1. Through chapter 16, verse 5. A. Barnabas and Saul are sent out. Chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. Among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, called the black man. Let's skip down to the notes. 13 and 1. Called the black man, literally, who was called nigger. Nigger is a Latin loan word meaning 
black. Skip down further in the notes. In the light of Sabians pairing in the list with Rusis from Cyrene, most commentators see this as a nickname referring at the least to Simeon's ethnic and geographical origin, if not to his race, Niger or Nigger, the black man. Simeon's ethnic origin. Wikipedia, Antioch. Antioch on the Orontes was a Hellenistic and later a Christian city. The city's ruin lies on the Orontes River. Antioch was located on the Orontes River in Syria. Ancient city of Antioch, Orontes River in Syria. The city of Antioch located on the Orontes River. The city of Antioch on the Orontes. The rights of the Jews of Antioch on the Orontes by A. Kasher. According to Josephus' description, just as the Jews of Alexandria, Egypt, were known as Alexandrians. Their co religionists in Antioch were called Antiochians. For Seleucus, the founder of the Seleucid kingdom, granted them their politeira. He says, furthermore, that they also received honor from the kings of Asia when they, the Jews, served with the Greeks, with them in war. Politeria, Syrian citizenship. The Jews served in the Syrian army. On another occasion, Josephus noted the Jewish race was scattered all over the inhabited world, mainly in Syria. But it was at Antioch that they specially congregated, probably owing to the greatness of the city, but mainly because the successors of King Antiochus also known as Epiphanes, had enabled them to live there in security. They even allowed them to participate in the city equally with the Greeks. Now, they were in the church that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Nigger, and Lucis of Cyrene, and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, Acts 13 and 1. So Jews were first called Christians in Syria. When the war broke out, the Jewish and Roman War in 66 AD, and Greeks and Jews were everywhere engaged in bloody strife, the Antiochians or the citizens of Antioch did no harm to the Jewish 
fellow citizens. When the Jewish Roman War broke out, the Jews of Syria were not involved. Greeks and Jews in Syria fought, but not Romans and Jews. And at that time, the Greeks were under the empire of the Romans. After the fall of Jerusalem and the subjugation of the Jews, however, bitter hate trade arose between the Antichians and the Jews. When the Romans destroyed Jerusalem, the Greeks living in Antioch wanted to change the civil rights of the Jews living in Antioch. The Greeks sought to abolish their citizenship the victorious Titus was received by the Antiochians with enthusiasm, but they could not induce him to expel the Jews from their city, nor even to destroy the brazen tablets upon which the franchises of the Jews were inscribed. Emperor Vespasian Titus, Judean woman. The Christian era, the Jewish diaspora or diaspora in the first century AD. By the first century, both Jewish and non-Jewish writers express astonishment at the extent of the Jewish dispersion over the Hellenistic world. The causes were varied, but included immigration, exile, voluntary military service under foreign monarchs, and the sale into slavery of those captured after the fall of Jerusalem. This dispersion was to have profound consequences, not only for the Jews, but for the whole world. Some Jews went into slavery. Other volunteered their military service to foreign kings, including the Roman emperors. Atlas of the Bible, page 1, 70. Many of the Israelites immigrated out of the jurisdiction of the Roman Empire. The Judeo Syrians founded the Ghana Empire of West Africa 300 to 1100 AD. Wikipedia, Ghana Empire. The Ghana Empire, also known as Wagadu or Akar, was a West African empire based in the modern day southeast of Mauritania and Western Mali that existed from 300. A.D. into 1100 A.D. Theories concerning the foundation of Ghana. French colonial officials, notably Maurice de la Fosse, whose works on West African history has been criticized by scholars Delaforce produced a convoluted theory of an invasion by Judeo-Syrians. The West African Kingdom of Ghana was founded by Jews from Syria, Judeo-Syrians. 
They immigrated from the Roman Empire. Now this map of Jewish colonies in Africa is from the book Lost Tribes, a myth by Alan Goodbay. On the map, yellowed and highlighted, the Jewish Kingdom of Ganata location or the Jewish Kingdom of Ghana. Jewish Kingdom of Ghana. The Jewish Kingdom of Ganata or Ghana. Jewish Kingdom of Ganata, Taganet, founded 300 AD by white Libyan Berbers. And this time, no matter how dark you were, or if your hair was woolly, if you came from the Middle East, you were labeled white. The kingdom occupied the great lowland, connecting the coastal caravan route with the upper Niger. Jews were on the coast in Philo's time. Philo a Jewish scholar from Alexandria, Egypt. 22 Berbers, Jewish kings, reigned here before the Hagar, the scholar bought. That's his quote. 44 have reigned by 790 AD when the dynasty was overthrown. At Lamlam, 200 miles west of Timbuktu, a Jewish trade oasis persisted till 1076 AD when overthrown by Muslims. Bought in his book Travels in North Africa. The medieval Kamurai was possibly another remnant of the Jewish Taganet. Dr. J.J. Williams, author of the new monumental work, Hebrewisms in West Africa, 1930, writes me, the author Alan H. Goodbay, that Ghana was in 17 degrees north latitude, 7 degrees east longitude, west of Nima. This puts it about 270 miles west by north from the much later Timbuktu, 70 miles northwest of the medieval Lam Lam. Let's go to the book, Hebraism of West Africa, page 227, south of the Sahara. Whatever may be thought of the more or less mythological traditions connected with the earliest Jews in North Africa, it is now practically an established fact that a Jewish nation, Jewish at least in faith, and perhaps too in origin, long held sway south of the Sahara. But from the second and third centuries, there was there also Judeo Syrians coming from Cyrenica. Cyrenica, Libya was in the Roman Empire. Judeo Syrians immigrating outside the Roman Empire and founding a kingdom in West Africa called Ghana by scholars.
Ghana, the title of Ghana, from which their capital took its name. They were Judeo-Syrians. The Jews of Syria established the kingdom of Ghana in West Africa. The Judeo-Syrians migrated from Libya, a country that was part of the Roman Empire. They fled into the interior of West Africa along the Niger River. The World Book Encyclopedia, page 306. The majority of American Blacks trace their origin to an area in Western Africa that was controlled by three great and wealthy empires from about AD 300s to the late 1500s. These empires, Ghana, Mali, and Songhai, Black Americans, in addition to dark brown skin, most members have brown eyes, dark woolly or curly hair. The Judo Syrians founded the Ghana Empire, the very same people who were enslaved in the transatlantic slave trade. We are not investigating the history of the group of Judeo-Syrians that fled the Roman Empire and founded kingdoms in the interior of Africa. This time, we want to know about the Judeo-Syrians that stayed in the Roman Empire and became its ruling elite a hundred years after the destruction of Jerusalem and who fell from power during the revolutions of Europe. Black people in ancient Roman history, the Black Romans, the Judeo-Syrians, the Jews of Syria and Jerusalem, the Byzantine Empire, the Holy Roman Empire. From the book, From Babylon to Timbuktu, Page 84. In the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son Titus put an end to the Jewish state with great slaughter. During the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. During the period from Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. The slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Page 86. The Jews are a omnipresent people. They seem to exist everywhere. 
Judeo-Syrians, Jews of Syria. Here is a map of Antioch, the city of Antioch in Syria. The city of Antioch in Syria is located in the red circle. The arrow, the red arrow indicates where the location of the city, Dera Europis. Judea, Jerusalem, is in the yellow circle, the distance between these three cities, Jerusalem and Judea, Syria, or the city of Antioch in Syria, and the city of Dera Europis. On another occasion, Josephus noted that the Jewish race was scattered all over the inhabited world, mainly in Syria. But it was at Antioch that they specially congregated, partly owing to the greatness of the city, but mainly because the successors of King Antiochus, also known as Epiphanes, had enabled them to live there in security. They even allowed them to participate in the city equally with the Greeks. After the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, Jews, Israelites, lived in Syria in great numbers. In the map, the city of Antioch in the yellow circle in the city of Dera Europis, in the Red Circle. The city of Antioch and Dera Europis are both located in Syria. Dera Europis Synagogue, Syria, 256 AD. An artistic rendering of what the synagogue would have looked like in 256 AD. Discovery of Dera Europis Synagogue, 1920 AD. The synagogue has life size paintings on its walls. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexion to black and skin color. From the book, the Black Presence in the Lands of the Bible, page 15. The ruins of the city, Dera Europis. The city lies next to the Euphrates River. The archaeologists who did the excavation of this city were able to piece together the city plan, the city grid of this city. One day in 1920 AD, a British soldier in Syria stumbled across the lost site of a Greek fortress now called Dera Europis. Between 1920 and 1937, extensive archaeological 
research was conducted at Dura site. which uncovered a Hebrew synagogue, Christian chapel, and a temple of Mitra, untouched since 256 A.D. When it fell to the invading army, of Persia. Hebrew Synagogue. Temple of Mitra. Judeo Syrians and the Roman military. Judeo Syrians, Septimius Severus, Roman Emperor, and his family. Jesus, Yahweh Shai, said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. John 5 and 8. Christian Chapel, Dura Europus.
Judeo-Syrians. Temple of Bel, Dera Europus. Judeo Syrians Judeo Syrians Dura Europus Judeo Syrians The Four Tetrarchs Judeo Syrians The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Acts, chapter 2, verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God, Yahweh. The Roman Empire, 68 BC to 476 AD. Dera Europus was a buffer zone and a crossroad between the Roman Empire and the Parthian Empire. Dera Europus was a crossroad for the world, the border of the Roman Empire, the West, and the Parthian Empire, the East. The Mithras Temple was originally a religious philosophy from Persia, the Parthian Empire, but it eventually became popular among the Roman legions, or rather the Judeo-Syrians, who became the dominant group in the military. The Judeo Syrian Roman soldiers became the Knights of the Middle Ages. Cult of the Invincible Sun. The religion the Roman soldiers used to govern the empire. They used the mistress cult to manage the military and control the Roman Empire. The cult of Sol Invictus, the invincible son. Their religious beliefs were based in Christianity, 
mixed with materialism. This spiritual corruption eventually led to their downfall and the revolutions of the serfs of Europe. Now, this is an article that you can read to help you understand what Emperor Diocletian did to place Roman citizens into a state of serfdom. The Roman road to feudal serfdom. Here's a post from 10 years ago. It features some important history from ancient Rome. History that's important because of the relevant warning that it offers to us today, namely government economic interventions in general and mandated price controls in particular are barbarous. Feudalism sparked by Rome's regulations. On page 642-643 of Wells Durant's remarkable book, Caesar and Christ, he discusses Diocletian's economic policies. Diocletian reigned from 282 to 305 A.D. In years of peace, Diocletian, with his aides, faced the problems of economic decay. To overcome depression and prevent revolution, he substituted a managed economy for the law of supply and demand. To ensure the supply of necessaries for the cities and the armies, he brought many branches of industry under complete state control. In 301, Diocletian and his colleagues, joint rulers of an administratively divided empire, issued an edictum de pretis. The edict was into our time the most famous example of an attempt to replace economic laws by governmental decrees. Its failure was rapid and complete. Durant goes on to explain how these economic regulations combined with higher taxes cause people to engage in unprecedented levels of hiding their productive activities from the state and into fleeing Rome. Medieval feudalism, Durant argues, finds its chief root in the restrictions that Diocletian and his successors imposed as they attempted to tie people to the land in order to prevent them from fleeing. Diocletian resorted to measures that in effect established serfdom in fields, factories, and guilds. Durant concludes this discussion with the sorrowful observation that relatively few Romans protested as they apparently were hoodwinked into believing that in exchange for their freedom, they were gaining greater security. A telling tale. Seventeen eighty nine, France. One of the major factors leading up to the revolution and uprising 
of the French people was that the vast majority of them lived in a state of slavery or serfdom since the time of Emperor Diocletian. Most of the events we read about in history, such as Columbus discovery of the Americas or the Seven Year War and the Christianization of Europe was events involving a minority of players, namely the nobility and middle class. The vast majority or 85% was not involved in these events. They worked the land and was not mobile. Seventeen seventy six, the United States. The Revolutionary War, also known as the American War of Independence, was part of the movement of subject peoples breaking away from the authority of European monarchs. King George III, George Washington, or King George III versus George Washington. King George III and his wife, Queen Charlotte. King and Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland and the American Thirteen Colonies. The Royal Coats of Arms. United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Royal Coats of Arms. Common version on the left. Scottish version on the right. Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg Stralitz. The wife of King George the Third. Charlotte was born into the royal family of Mecklenburg Stralitz, a duchy in northern Germany. The Duchy of Mecklenburg Stralitz. Northern Germany and its coat of arms. The Royal Physician, Baron Stokar, describes her as having a true mulatto face. King George III has the mulatto phenotype also. And that's because they were both descendants of Judeo-Syrians.
along with tracing Queen Charlotte's DNA to the Black Portuguese royal line, there are other examples that help support the Queen's mixed race. During the War of 1812, while the Queen was still on the throne, Sir Alexander Cochrane, a Vice Admiral of the British Navy, campaigned to enlist enslaved American blacks to join the British side of the war by stating the Queen of England is a Negro woman causing the largest emancipation before the end of the Civil War. More than 4,000 enslaved blacks joined the British side of the war leaving behind their American masters. Queen Charlotte is portrayed on screen by the Guyanese actress Golda Rachevall. Undoubtedly, the casting was on point so that the viewing audience could receive some unbiased historicity concerning the era of the revolutionary period. When historians or Hollywood leave out certain details, it's almost impossible to understand the nature of the history we are viewing, reading, or studying. Here is one example of two famous people who could easily become misclassified in the public perception concerning their ethnic origins. Alexander Dumas and Ada Isaac Menken. Alexander Dumas was a French writer. One of his most well-known work of literature was the French historical adventure novel written in 1844, The Three Musketeers. The main characters of the novel, The Musketeers of the Guard or King's Musketeers were people of color, just like the author. Physical description of D'Artagnan, face long and brown, high cheekbones, a sign of sagacity, the maxillary muscles enormously developed, an infallible sign by which a Gascon may always be detected. The Three Musketeers, Chapter 1. D'Artagnan was part of the 2% ruling class of France. In his adventures, the other classes of people are easily 
distinguishable, such as Planchet, D'Artagnan, personal servant. Edda, Isaac, Mencken. Wikipedia, Edda, Isaacs, Mencken, was an American actress, painter, and poet, and was the highest earning actress of her time. Mencken told many versions of her origins, including her name, place of birth, ancestry, and religion, and historians have differed in their accounts. Most have said she was born a Louisiana Creole Catholic with European and African ancestry. Ada kept her ethnic identity a mystery. Early life and education. About 1940, the consensus of scholars was that her parents was Auguste Theodore, a free black man, and Marie, a mixed race Creole. And Ada was raised as a Catholic. There's only one reason for this, to hide your identity when it can be disadvantageous. Blending in or assimilating was something that was commonly practiced with the Israelites. Ida hid her identity as her forefathers had done thousands of years before her time when they were in a difficult situation. Abraham asked his wife, Sarah, to disguise her identity around the Egyptians. Genesis 12 chapter, verse 11 through 20. Genesis chapter 12, verse 11. And it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. And it will come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me. But thee, they will keep alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and that my soul may live because of thee. Joseph, the father of the Israelite tribes of Ephraim, and Manasseh was sold by his brothers into the hands of the Ishmaelites, Arab merchants. The Ishmaelites, Arabs, sold Joseph to the Egyptians, Nilotic peoples. But in the process of time, Joseph was elevated in status among the Egyptians from a slave to the highest position in Egypt. Only the Pharaoh was above him. Eventually, a famine 
and lack of food occurred in the land of Canaan, the place where the brothers of Joseph lived. And Joseph, brothers, the fathers of the tribes of Israel, purchased food from the ruler of Egypt, second in command, their own brother. His own brothers didn't recognize him because he hid his identity and assimilated into Egyptian society. And Joseph, his Egyptian name, Zafnat Pania. Joseph didn't lose his identity. He hid his identity. Genesis chapter 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. He never forgot that he was an Hebrew by birth and culture. Moses was preserved from death by drowning. The decree issued by the Egyptian Pharaoh against the Hebrews male children. He was raised by that same Pharaoh's daughter as an Egyptian. Moses passed for an Egyptian, but he never forgot that he was a Hebrew. Eventually, Moses, who was assimilated with the Egyptian nation, was destined to play a great role in the deliverance of the Israelite nation out of Egypt and slavery. And the book of Exodus records the history of Moses, Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Put the question to our ancestors. Study what they learned from their ancestors. For we're newcomers at this, with a lot to learn, and not too long to learn it. So why not let the ancients teach you, tell you what's what, instruct you in what they knew from experience? Job chapter 8, verse 8 through 10, MSG translation. There is a lot to learn from the history of the Israelites. There were people with great wisdom. When applied properly, it helped them and guided them in difficult situations. They searched their records when they needed to make important decisions in life. They didn't navigate this world blindly. The inspired word of their God was a light to them. If you study the scriptures, you can find patterns of behavior displayed by the Israelites. When they were in captivity, they served in prominent positions at times. 
hidden sometimes in plain sight. Hadessa, Esther, Israelite wife of Ahasuerus, king of the Persian Empire, 13th century Russian icon. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Esther chapter 2 verse 10. Ahasuerus, also known as Xerxes the First, and Esther. Henry's, Eleanor's, and Richard's effigies at Frontvard's Abbey near Chayon in Alju, France. Henry, Eleanor. Richard, shortly after separating herself from Louis VII, Eleanor married Henry II, Plantagenet, King of England. Henry was active and energetic, both on the battlefield and in the bedroom. He expanded his holdings, and as his reign progressed, he had many children with Eleanor. Tensions over the future inheritance of the empire began to emerge. Encouraged first by Louis VII and then Louis' son and successor, Philip Augustus. Some of Henry's son, assisted by Eleanor, revolted but were defeated. Henry imprisoned Eleanor for years, but she outlived him and was released by her son, Richard the Lion-Hearted. After Richard died, Eleanor's own favorite son, John, reigned and lost much of Henry's empire. Lionheart in Lackland, page 8. Eleanor of Equitaine had a dark complexion, black eyes, black hair, and was curvaceous with a superb figure that never ran to fat, even in old age. She was also at the time the Western world's richest and most prestigious heiress from her father, Duke William X, ruler of a dynasty originally established in Poitiers in the ninth century, and thus in many ways, very like the Angevins, she had inherited vast territories. Richard the Lion-Hearted, King of England. This image or effigy is from uh, Krakow, Poland, Collegium, Myers, Kazimierz, Wykaya, Wikimedia Commons. English statue of Kazimier III of Poland and Collegium, Myers, Krakow, Poland. 
Casimir III, the great king of Poland. A Judeo-Syrian. Augustinian Church, Vienna, Austria, originally built in the 14th century as the parish church of the imperial court of the Habsburgs. As imperial church, many Habsburg weddings took place there, including the wedding of Archduchess and future Empress Maria Tressa, in 1736, to Duke Francis of Lorraine, the wedding of Archduchess Maria Louise in 1810 to Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte of France, Maria Leo Poldina in 1817 to Don Pedro of Portugal, and the wedding of Emperor Franz Joseph in 1854 to Justice Elizabeth in Bavaria. Augustinian Church, Vienna, Austria. Our Lady of Loreto, Vienna. Austria, 1627. A Judeo-Syrians.